Hello and welcome to the historic 18 under round shot by the man, the myth, the legend, Paul Macbeth. My name, Jeremy Colling. I am joined by none other than the man himself, Paul. We are here second round from the 2018 Great Lakes Open. Three players tied at the top shooting the course record at 11 under. What's going through your head coming into round two? Round two is just a capitalize on the few mistakes that I made uh, but really just kind of play play this course you know how it's designed it, it's a pretty open up and down course and uh, my goal is just to go out there and shoot a great round it's a pretty good mindset coming into a, a round where the conditions are calm and the course is really set up to be attacked and I mean attacked is what the course was done at 11 down you know, that was a great round. By all standards, we thought that maybe low 50s would be the course record when we left. Yeah, the the course uh, kind of lengthened this year. Uh, a lot of new tee pads, a few new basket placements. Uh, so it was kind of new to all of us. So we didn't know whether 11 under was great or if it was uh, going to be, you know, kind of average. So walk us through this T-Bird this 3, correct? Yeah, T-Bird 3 is my understable one. It's a long downhill hole. Um 477 feet, and you just have to control it on a huge Anheuser. And I put it just outside the circle, probably about 35, 37 feet. <laughs> and we're just going to start off the round with a little slow mez action just outside the circle, but um, good stroke there. And that's a that's a bonus birdie. It's the fifth hardest hole in the course, and it's certainly one that you feel really good about getting. Yeah, um, starting out with a putt like that is always a great feeling. Uh, but that's probably the part of my game I've been working on the most. And uh, I think having a great putt is, is what really develops that consistent um, consistent rounds. Yeah, so we're on hole two here, par five, 726 foot, straight uphill the whole way. Really challenging just because your footing on the second shot becomes a trick no matter where you land. I mean, you could land a, a safe shot at the bottom of the hill and then rip, or you could do this and go big off the tee. Yeah, going big kind of brings in the, the left and right side into play a little bit more, but I feel like that's what you have to do if you want to get an eagle look. Um, it's not really about the distance on this hole. It's just keeping it uh, in between those two rough um, sides. Right. The, the two rough patches really become difficult. And not only that, you're kind of in the ideal spot because you're on the right side of the fairway, which allows you to swing it out a bit more. And you're long after two on this just incredibly far playing par five, 726 feet. The yeah. most eagled hole on the course. Yeah, being on the right side allowed me to put a little bit of flex and movement on it and uh, landed about 20 feet from the basket for eagle. Yeah, and consider that one a drop in there. You're three down through two holes. I think probably starting to feel a little heat. I mean, that's a great start. Yeah. <laughs> we got these goofballs here. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that describes it. You know, when you start out three down through two, you're kind of on a roll. Yeah. <laughs> Hold three, par four, a lot of fun. Really great tee shot. You get to really see one fly as long as you can keep it um, in the fairway off the tee, which is a pretty wide, generous fairway. 900 plus feet here. Just kind of just grip it and rip it, right? Yeah, the only trouble is on the right side. There's nothing out to the left. Uh, the first round, I made the mistake of going right and getting myself into some trouble. So I told myself this round, fix that, don't do it again, and just throw it out into that field. And uh, being on that left side is a little bit higher, too, so you can see the basket. And, uh, so I'm actually looking at the basket from here, so I can see. Yeah, that's a Yeah, that's a big advantage. If you throw it straight down the fairway, you can't see the pin. But from out here to the left, you can, and... Um, what? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> I I wasn't anticipating a skip. I knew I threw it great. I yeah. expected it just to sit under the basket, but when it jumped up. I mean, it jumped up high enough to go in. If it was just three or four inches further, you got yourself five down through three. I mean, like, come on. After that, you've got to be thinking to yourself, all right, that's... I don't... Yeah. It probably, my round probably wouldn't have been as good. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. It's It's hard to deal with that much emotion that early on. And I mean... The eagle on two, it feels like a really spectacular birdie. It feels kind of like an eagle, but that right there, that's every bit of an eagle, you know, if that goes in. But. Yeah, yeah, hole two, if you just don't get the good, if you don't get a good drive on hole two, your eagle's out of the question. Right, exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, if that would have went in, that would have been a really good feeling eagle. So hole four, par four, 580 feet. 
Just a big hazard to the landing zone here. There's a few trees you gotta miss, but it's got a very specific narrow landing zone. You really gotta make sure that you're not too far left, not too far right, and if you come up short, the low ceiling for the approach makes it almost impossible to attack on their second. Yeah, this is one of the new pads. Um, and for me, I just played out to the right and kind of hyzer into that tree that I just hit there. So that's actually exactly what I was trying to do is hit that tree. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like under that tree is the biggest opening to the basket. And it kind of allows, I kind of went a little too far left, but uh, allows for like a nice little turnover. But here I got to yeah, get that T-Bird 3 a little fancy forehand here. A little fancy forehand you've pulled out there. That's a great recovery shot because... That's not the ideal landing zone. I mean, you say you meant to go for that tree. So you, so let's just go backwards real quick. You tell me you hit it outside the circle putt on one. Then you eagle two. You almost eagle three. And then you meant to hit that tree that you hit. So you've basically, you're playing perfect, obviously. You're playing one better than perfect. And then um, come up with that T-Bird three recovery shot. That's just... Yeah, yeah. The, the drive was exactly what I wanted. I kind of got an unfortunate bounce off that branch, but still had a second shot. Uh, a little more challenging, but got the birdie and that, that was the goal. Now if there's a hole that you can miss on this course and derail a perfect round, hole five is the hole. There's just, we talked about this in, during coverage of the event, there's got to be a hundred guardian trees in the way. You decided to take them all out of the play. Yeah, I mean, I still don't know what to do on this hole. <laughs> Tournament's over. <laughs> right. So I don't think just, anyone does. I, I, w I tried in practice to go through the gap um, and there was just a, too many trees to actually get clean and I don't know why. I was like, I think I remember a big turnover on this from yeah. like four or five years ago. <laughs> yeah. And it worked in practice. I said, well, this is worst case scenario, I feel like. Yeah. Put it 60 feet away from the basket, but still get a look. Um, yeah. yeah. That's how I was feeling. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's just how the putt was feeling. Was, I didn't have a doubt in my mind that I was going to miss that. I, I think this is this is probably the first time that I heard I think I may have heard the jeer, the the cheers from the crowd when you skipped up and hit the cage on three um, but this was the time when we felt like we heard a little league baseball game going on in the background and some kid is hitting home runs every time they're at bat because it was just like the crowd was starting to pick up you know you're five, six down through five and you know the, there was kind of a buzz in the air at that point yeah uh, I mean the Michigan crowd was incredible but it wasn't just me playing well too. You know, so they were, Nico was on fire. Um, yeah, he was but, playing great too. But they were just, they were roaring. Mm -hmm. I like I like the Michigan crowd. Yeah, for sure. And to the infamously named snapper head hole that I kind of messed up and called it that, the combination of a snapping turtle and a copperhead. And I thought that this drive was going to put you in a really bad spot. I, it looked to me it that did. you were off to the, too far to the left. What were you thinking here? Um, my drive, I, th I just threw it a little too soft. I didn't want to flip over to the right because I knew if I was left side, I have a forehand angle. Uh, I learned that from the first round in practice um, that if I went a little left, I could manage that. Um, and I was fortunate that I didn't go too far left into that stuff. Uh, but still, another circle's edge putt here. I think that's almost three or four from 25 beyond. Yeah, there's... You're not making it too easy. I mean, really, you're, you're tapping on three and kind of your putt for eagle on two are kind of short and easy, but you, you've worked for the other three, um, so, or the other four. Hole seven, par four, one of the easier par fours in the course. This is one where you, you know, obviously you have to execute the accurate tee shot, but once you get out to the left, there's almost no way to really mess up the approach. It's a nice little shot where you can kind of attack the pin and go for your eagle too. Yeah. Um this par four is, I think, the easiest par four on the course. Um, it's just get out that gap and kind of finish a little bit left, and you'll have a second shot towards the basket. And then with the ba basket being up on that hill, you can kind of really attack it. Um, and that's that's the ideal spot mm -hmm. right there. Uh, probably left with 100 and something feet left, maybe 200 feet up the hill. But uh, so, I don't know. I still worry about if I do throw it too good and hit the cage that it could roll you know, up to 60 <laughs> feet away. Right, so... Take the little Macbeth Nova shot, place it up there for a little bag on the shoulder tap in. Nice little relief after working hard for the other holes. But yeah, we're now eight down through seven. And this is the hardest stretch. Yeah, this is when the middle stretch of the course, the middle six holes are really when things become difficult. After you finish seven, you have the second easiest hole in the course, and then you get to eight, which is kind of this plinko crapshoot kind of shot here up at the top of the trees. If you get through the trees, great. If not, then you've got a 30 to 50 foot putt. 
but um, it's you know fairly easy hyzer to get down there near those trees, but getting through is kind of just a matter of luck. Yeah, exactly. Um, that, that's exactly what it is. You throw the disc and cross your fingers. You know, I let this go. I'm like, okay, that's near the basket. Now let's see if it gets through. Right. Um, and it's really just listen to the crowd. Yeah, and that got a great kick as well. You were going to be pretty much parked anyways, but then the kind of got a forward movement there at the end, and that's going to be another tap-in. Yeah, I was going to probably be just inside the circle, but uh, that nice little kick at the end gave me about 15-footer and an, an easy birdie on a hole that I don't think is too easy because of the luck. Sure. I daren't say world champ love. <laughs> <laughs> hole nine, par three ish <laughs> ish exactly yeah 452 feet uphill turnover with a low ceiling there's 60 57 feet of elevation on this hole so 452 feet that's just raw distance it actually plays probably 550 if not further yeah it, it is a really long shot um and you can kind of cut it off by going on the inside right here which was the gap i was going for all three rounds and hit it I hit it better the first round. Yeah. Like, to say that it was better than that. It's hard to really imagine it because... Yeah. Ugh. That's that's exactly the, my best-case scenario in mm -hmm. my head. And, uh, and then it's still an uphill, nearly 40-footer. Yeah, you got a little headwind. Oh, spoiler alert, he's going to make it, folks. <laughs> 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 and you, you've now birdied this hole the first two rounds, and this was a hole that was birdied by very few people. Only six people were able to birdie it. And right now you are 10 down through nine and look at the reactions pouring in. People on social media are going crazy. Is he human? I, I don't know, I'm sitting next to you. I'm poking you on the shoulder. You're definitely human, but uh, you're yeah. not made of the same thing that we're all made of. I don't know what it is, but, and Nico's off to a hot start and you're just leaving yeah. him in the dust right now. And yeah, it's just, I, knew, I knew that putt was for 10 under too. You yeah, know, so I added pressure to myself for no reason, but. Right. Uh, it makes it a little bit more exciting. It gives it something more to play for. And sometimes, like, who are you going to compete against when you're playing that well? You're only competing against yourself at that point. I mean, obviously, we're only... Which is what we actually always do. Right, right. What we're supposed to do. Yeah. Well, hole 10 is a par 3. It's a huge Anheuser. One of the harder par 3s in the course. It's the third hardest hole in the course. And what? Whoa. Yeah, I almost aced this hole the first round. Uh, so I just wanted to repeat that that same shot. Uh, yeah. Just a little slip on the tee, but still I should have been able to get it over. I still have like 70, 65 feet left. Yeah, so You're in throw on range. Are you thinking, do I keep going for this one better than perfection? <laughs> I didn't think about that, to be honest. Uh, I just, again, I didn't want to hit the pole. I didn't want to hit the cage and roll down the hill because it's so steep. And mm -hmm. I've seen this roll away on it. Now, so easily. I want to bring back something real quick. At Waco, during the second round, you were 10 down through nine there as well. Did yes. that start to creep into your mind when you missed 10? Because you had had the same experience where you had you've done this before, this year, and then your back nine was not stellar at that course. And so you're coming into this back nine here. What What's your mentality and how to keep that momentum going? Uh, so going back to Waco, I know, I mean, I learned from Waco. like. I just got too greedy. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm throwing everything good. I'm making everything like, let's just go for this par four, mm -hmm. you know? And it, I just got greedy and that's what happened. And here I just wanted, I really wanted to take it one shot at a time. And, and that's what I was able to do is just take it one shot at a time, which everyone talks about doing that. But it's so hard to do. Exactly. It's so hard to do, especially if you're throwing 45 shots, 60 shots, whatever the course calls for. It's so hard to do. And that's a solid putt there from close to 30 feet. You know, that's not an easy putt. I know that you're in the zone, but that's still like, that is getting it done right there. And yeah, I didn't, I didn't like that putt either. Yeah. It came out a little wobbly and, and I didn't like it. So I, I mean, even though I'm still perfect, there's things I'm trying to adjust. Like right. That putt didn't come out clean. I'm like, all right, I need to get that better on my next next uh, putt, you know? Of course, that's, uh, that's the way you do this. And, Hole 12 is the hardest hole in the course. Again, another hole that you'd birdied the first round. What are you thinking here? What is your what is your plan of attack on this hole? Uh, get it out with a little bit of hyzer. I think the speed's going to pull it down that hill. And uh, I just, that once is, it hits the ground, I can't, I, control, I can't control that. But I know it's going to have enough speed and momentum to go towards the basket. It's so insanely good, Paul. You're at the edge of the circle here once again for like the fifth time of the round. And just heart. I mean, you talk about making the adjustment. That didn't look like you needed to make any adjustments at all. That hit the center. 
perfect that, pace. That's exactly what I said. The last putt, I knew like that wasn't good. I have to I have to fix that and I have to do it quick. And that was my best putt of the, of the round. Yeah. Was that next one? Oh, that, I I don't know. Whole six was or five was pretty impressive <laughs> from outside the circle. Yes. Yeah. Okay, but. Anyways, but that's I mean that that's exactly what you said. That's how you get that focus. You know, yeah. even though you're doing perfect things or you're doing great things, right? Like, how can I get it better? How can I do it? And when it kind of slips up a little bit, luckily it was on a short putt, and I can make that adjustment on the next one. Are you looking at this hole and thinking this is a pretty easy two shot hole? Uh, if you play it right. Okay. Uh, if you play it too high up that hill, you're you're standing up that hill, awkward footing. Yep. And then you're going uphill, and you got to bring the disc down, so you can make it hard on yourself. Even though it's right here in front of you, I just throw the hyzer out there, get myself a little to the left so I can throw another hyzer up the hill. It's it's very challenging getting the height right on this shot because there is not, I don't want to say it's a low ceiling, but you do have to get it up pretty high and it's difficult because you're so far below the basket. I mean, that shot itself right there was a 50 foot elevation because you're not really getting that far up the hill yep. in your tee shot. You're strategically playing a casual drive to the bottom of the hill and then going up 50 and maybe 250 feet. Yeah, That's yeah. a hard shot to do. Yeah, I mean, I could throw it further on there if I wanted, but I don't think it helps the hole. Yeah, I agree. I don't think, I don't think it helps you. So you're 13 through 13, you're going to hole 14, and this is one of the easier holes in the course. One of the, Certainly one of the easier par threes that you really feel like you've got to pick this birdie up. Yeah, this one, uh, you can throw it and know it's good 95% of the way, but the last 5%, yep. you don't know what happens. So right. I released this, knew it was the exact line I wanted, and I just had to wait to hear the crowd. Yep. Um, caught, that, caught that leaf, but it was coming in in front of them. So... Uh, and just like that, that perfect round could have been derailed if it was an inch or two further. If that had caught the tree a little bit stronger, it could have kicked you off to the left. You had no putt, got to lay up, and yeah, a perfection break is there. Out, of, out of the question. But Yeah, fortunate got, break to get about 20 feet again. Not a gimme, but still, another, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. another putt. Uh, You're continuously challenging yourself, and that's the... Kind of what made it fun and exciting for everybody is that it wasn't just like you were throwing the disc perfect. You were throwing the disc incredibly well so far, but you're still working hard on every hole. Yeah, and, and that could have attributed to being so focused is because there wasn't, there was in that range of like 20 to 35, like just you have to put a little bit more into these. You can't just mm -hmm. toss it in and know it's in. And this is, a, I think, one of the par fours you can attack for eagle, but... I don't know. I just like that easy, the easy forehand out, mm -hmm. and uh, then run the second shot. Yeah, this, the second shot you've got a a pretty open um, shot, as you can see here. Just a Nova approach. It looks like you're going with. Yeah, and as soon as I let this go, I thought this had a chance of going in. Yeah, I think we all did, and it just kind of got a little drop there, and yeah, that's that's a nice little no thought about it tap in there, and. Are you so now we're through 15 holes. You've got three left. I, you know that you're 15 down. Yes, this 16 is the, the moment where I'm like, all right, I could do 18. Like, <laughs> yeah, this, this could happen. Moment. Yeah, this is the exact hole where I was like, this is my last gap that I have to hit. This is probably the hardest. Well, 18 is the hardest of the last three, but this yes. one, this is the gap. You don't have too many gaps that hit on this course. If you don't hit the gap, you don't have a putt on this Correct. Hole. So this is a huge tee shot coming up here. What are you going to throw? Uh, McPro Rock 3, a little slightly beat in. Um, I just let it go on a nice hyzer, and as soon as I let it go, I know if it's in the gap, uh, just because I know that disc so well. Yeah, and uh, I think you probably were thinking to yourself, there's no putt on this one. Yeah, there's no putt. I, I'm going to take all the stress away, and we're going to get a little follow flight because this is so pure down the middle and such an important shot to keep that that perfection alive. And uh, I mean, look at that, just very little drift, fade, anything. Just can't really draw it up any cleaner than that. Yeah, now at that, when you're that close, you're just like, don't spit out. <laughs> right. Don't, don't come back to me. Um, but yeah, that was the last shot where I knew I have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and this one, I can kind of just let it rip. Yeah. And there's... The second shot's pretty open, but mm -hmm. it's, it's a hard distance to judge. Yeah. Uh, the, the, you know, for this hole, you really just want to, like you said, just let it rip. You don't have to be as perfect perfect on where the disc lands. You can adjust. You can throw a forehand or a backhand approach, really depending on where you land. Um, as more, the more distance you get, though, the slower you can uh, throw your approach in, which is kind of a big benefit, I suppose. 
Yeah, it definitely is. Um, and I, I threw this drive right where I wanted, maybe about 10 feet shorter than I wanted, still in the tall okay. grass. Yeah. But uh, for some reason, this second shot always gets me. Like, I don't want to go past it. Yeah. Which, it, it does slope down, but nowhere near what, like it does on the front side. And that is kind of a scary putt you got left there because you want to get to the top of that hill. This is no gimme. No, at this moment, I'm like, if I'm going to miss, I want to miss hole 17. I don't want to miss 18. Yeah. Because with that, right. everyone's going to be like, this is for 18. But if yeah. I miss 17, all that pressure's gone. Mm -hmm. But then I, you know, I make that putt. I'm so like, now all the right, pressure is here on hole 18. And <laughs> here it is. 315 feet straight uphill the whole way. One of the few holes that actually has out of bounds this left side all the way. And it was your only bogey of the event. First round, last hole, and you threw it out over the wall. So there's definitely that playing into your head. And we got 52 feet of elevation, which makes this hole easy to throw alley-oops on, but not easy to throw tee shots on. Yeah, the first round I threw it out of bounds, kind of just misread it. This time I was not going to misread it. I went with a little bit more of a stable disc and just knew I was putting well. Mm -hmm. So... Just put it up there. Yes, yeah, give just yourself a chance. There. Exactly. Give myself a chance for 18. And this is the moment where I was like, picture the world championships. Picture this is for the world. Like, you're going to have this pressure. Take advantage of it. And as soon as I let this go. Yeah! <laughs> I, knew that was, yes. I knew it wasn't dead center, but there was no way that thing was coming. Yeah, out. it was just such a great line the whole way. And... And then there you see the reaction is Paul Yulberry immediately calling the greatest round in the history of the game. And that was before 18 had even happened. And I mean, that's just history right there in the making. And to do it on such a large stage, on such an incredibly challenging course, such a variety of shots. I don't think I've ever seen a putt as hot as that. And I mean, look at that blemish back nine with that three on hole 10. I mean, what were you thinking there? That just must have been really hard to deal with. <laughs> I mean, I still get goosebumps right now like, <laughs> thinking about it. Like, it, nope. it, it was an incredible feeling to just go through those and just know every putt meant something. Every shot meant something um, from the beginning to end. You know, and, and sitting back on it now, it's like, I didn't take a moment off. Like, yeah. I, I, I didn't. And uh, that's like that, that's a feeling I'm gonna try to capture for the rest of my career, you know. And it, it's just a career filled with so many incredible moments and so many highlights. And this has got to sit up right up there at the top. I mean, it's not a world championship, but it is something that you'll always be able to look back and remember. And the, every single person in that crowd can go back and think, I was there when Paul shot 18 down. And then what came afterwards with the ESPN two minute, I mean, it's just like the things that have happened because of that, it's, it's really been amazing for the sport. And, um, it, you know, it, w w the historical significance to you, what does it mean to you? It means that other people can do it too. You know, it, it means that now people see that it can happen. Mm -hmm. And it's, I don't know, I feel like that's, that's more relevant in the sport than me just doing this. Yeah, I, when, when I see that, I don't get inspired. I, I throw up a little bit. I get I get nervous <laughs> and I start feeling like anxiety about my career decision. But no, it is uh, it is truly inspiring, to be honest. And it, it was amazing to just be a part of that in terms of just doing commentary for it. Just to watch that and experience it was, um, you know, an honor in itself. And i got to thank you so much for taking your time out today to be able to talk about this historic event. And we thank you all for joining in and watching History in the Making as Paul McBeth goes 18 down through 18 holes. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.